Hello, Mr. Stubbs. Hello, how are you? All right. Yeah, I just created that link uh, this morning. I thought I created my link. Uh, I don't know if everybody else going to come in. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, well, it's like I got the email at 10.04. Right. Yeah, and uh, it just took me a little minute to, um, to actually get through it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, we'll see if they all come in. What you can do, you could go. Uh, you ever took one of my classes? No, sir. I'm actually a student over here at UL. Oh, okay. Well, what you need to do is um, uh, my site. Uh, let me go to, uh, let me change this. Uh, I'm already uh, share, share my screen. All right. Go to create another uh, tab. And see why I want to go up. I want to keep that. Go to the tab and type uh, syl9.com. Okay. And hit enter, and it'll take you here. Well, somebody else came in. Um, hello, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Part Parnell. Uh, so you got to that uh, website, the syl9.com? Yes, sir. All right, what you do, click on the uh, 1943 link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this like all the uh like the book we need, whatever program we need to download? Right, stuff like that. But that yeah, that's just like my page. But we'll go to uh Canvas. Canvas will have uh some of the same information. But if you look to the right here, we also I also have like our degrees that we offer, you know, from the different schools that we work with. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I see uh, some others have come in. Uh, but then once you do that, it tells you that well, it won't be fall one, it'll be uh, section two. You would do the registration and uh, you click on register to sign roll. So uh, what happens from here, you scroll down and you click on register to sign roll and then you click register. And under register, you're gonna give your name, your major, the uh, section, which is two, the semester, which is uh, fall, the year 2020. And then this says uh, your last four digits of your B or your L number. So that would be uh, those last numbers in that uh, L number that BRCC gave you. Do we have to do this uh, every Thursday? Whenever uh, uh, we uh, no, you got, no, you're going to just register once. And then okay. every every Thursday you're gonna sign the roll. All right. Right. So then put in a, name, a password uh, that you're gonna remember. The requirements is just uh, uh, six characters, uh, and then your email, and then click then click register. Okay. And what it'll do? It'll uh, give you a page showing you your login. Your login gonna be your first initial, last initial, those last four digits dash, and the number two. And it also should email you uh, your, 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 a password and your email and your uh, login. Then you'll be able to uh, register. Now, uh, you might not be able to register. I might need to modify my, uh, my, uh, my uh, worksheet. So I might have to do that. So. Uh, go ahead on and try to uh, register, and I'll talk, go, go and talk to the rest of them. Okay. It was what? Uh, okay, this one, nine, All right, class. Uh, go back. 
Uh, yeah. All right. So, um, so hello everybody else. Uh, what I did uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, Stubbs, I got him to go through and sign the uh, or register to sign the roll. If anybody who have never taken my class before, you uh, first need to type in this URL, SYL9.com, and hit enter. And when you do that, it's going to give you a menu, and you're going to see CSCI 1943. You'll see CSCI 1943. Uh, click on CSCI 1943, and then you scroll to the bottom of the page in the middle, and you'll see sign slash, uh, I mean, register set slash sign row. And once you do that, uh, it'll take you to a screen allowing you to choose to register for uh, for this uh, signing of the row. And it'll take you to this screen. And that's, that's the screen I want you to put in your name, first name, last name, your major, the section which is two, the a semester which is fall, and the year which is 2020. And in this space, you will put in uh, your last digit, last four digits of your L number. And then you give yourself a password and an email address. Okay, so anybody have any questions so far? Any questions? Anybody? Everybody is going through this process. Mr. Robinson. I see you up there. All right, so let me uh, I'll do this on the wall. I don't want to close out my thing. I'll just go ahead. I'll just say, um, I'll do this. Right, let's go down the middle page, side row, and I'm going to go here. Oh, you should have went to, uh, yeah, from here you want to go, yeah, register, and then you get to here, sign the row. I'm going to go here. Uh, see how many people have actually are registered. Uh, no. mm -hmm. All right. So I have, uh, Ms. Jones, uh, that's what, Keith, uh, Mance, Robinson, Sampson, and Stubbs. So anybody else? Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So anybody have issues? Let me view it again. Let's see what happens. With Williams, Edward Williams, are you going through it? I think that's one, one person. Stubbs has it. Parnell has it. Okay, Robinson. Okay, Williams. So there's uh Williams. I'm registering now. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay. Derek Key. Uh, Derek Key. That's another one. I'm registering right now, too. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. And once you register, I'll go back to the other screen. Once you register, you should be able to, and we'll see, I have to check, um, I might need to modify some. You go to, uh, like I say, from the main page, you'll still go down here and click on register. That's when you come in every, every Thursday and go to uh, student utilities. And then you'll choose sign today's role. 
you click on sign today's role and it's going to ask you for your login. I don't have one with two in it. Uh, you would have yours, whatever, dash two. And then you click continue. It's going to give you the calendar and it should have the date, uh, today's date or whatever the current date is highlighted. And you simply go down here and, and click on uh, sign role. I should get an it error. It you can sign in. Huh? It said, mine just said you can't sign in at this time. All right. So don't worry about it. What I need to do, I need to modify something. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll modify that. Okay. But mine they did it for mine did it for Tuesday. So I don't have to modify my code. But I have you listed. As long as I have you listed in my uh in the list, I can uh, add you myself. And then next week uh, you'll be able to sign. Okay. What what's the course section? Section two. Yeah, you gotta make sure that's correct. Yeah, section two. And class, this is a 12 week class, man. This is, man, this going to be, whoa. We're going to see. Uh, let's see how it's going to roll. And what area did you get for uh, signing the room? Who got the error? It's me. You cannot me. sign. It. You can. Yeah, you cannot sign this time. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll modify that and fix that. Okay. All right. So hopefully everybody done uh, actually registered. Uh, nope, not yet. Boom, boom, boom. You having any issues, uh, Mr. Who is that? Mr. Key? Oh, not yet. Huh? You still you still in the process? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got somebody else. I I want to talk to him at the class. How how the class that he's supposed to look? Last four digits of your L number. Of your BOL number. I, I see Miss uh, Peyton, uh, or Mr. Peyton is not assigned in. Uh, we will go through that after. Uh -uh, somebody else still didn't know again. What's the um, class ID? No, that's the last four digits, right? I, I put my last four digits and it said it's wrong. It said class ID not found. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. You're not registering, though. Did you go through register? Yeah. Look, this is register. This is where you're at. No, I'm on the uh, sign today's road. Yeah, but did you go through this? 
Yeah. Uh, what section you put in? Two. What year? 2020. Okay, let's see something. Let me view. Hold on, let me view. Yeah, you won't be able to sign the road today, though. Uh, let's see. No, see, I don't see your name. What's your name? Derek Key. Yeah, see, you, you, uh, let's see something. Let me see something. Uh, Yeah, you, you put something in wrong. Oh, you chose the wrong uh, course. Let's see something. Try to get this real quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, key. Okay, you got two. Let's see what happened here. Thank okay. you. All right, let's see what you put here. 2001. I mean, 2021. I'll change it. So, all right. So now I should be able to see you. So the thing is, like I say, you got to put in the correct uh, information or uh, you won't be listed because you're not, uh, you won't meet the criteria. So I do have you now, Mr. Key. All right. So what we'll do, we'll we'll at the end of class, we'll we'll deal with the uh, the rest of the students. So remind me at the end of the class for us to go through this uh, registration to sign the roll. All right. So let's get to our uh, course. All right. In the course, all right. Our course here is. Uh, CSCI uh, 1943, okay? And we meet from 10 to 11.15 uh, on uh, Thursdays, all right? So here, and most people that went through, because uh, I published a class, I think, on Sunday or Saturday night. So here, you'll see miscellaneous information. This information that you will see, you see is uh, student uh, technological needs for fall 2020. Uh, Proctoria, which is the uh, the uh, browser uh, protection uh, lockdown software that we're going to use. Now you're going to have to load, uh, download a Proctoria. Proctoria uh, will you need you need not Canvas. You need Chrome. You have to have Chrome uh, on your computer. Uh, once you have have uh, gotten into Chrome, then you click on this link. And what will happen is it will take you through this process. And then you would have to install the Chrome, a Chrome extension. And once it uh, installed the extension, then it will go through some uh, a process. Then it will say done. Now, recently I've had students who loaded on the day, on the day of the test or whatnot and then go straight in trying to take the test. And for whatever reason, it didn't work. For some students, it worked. Some students, it didn't. Uh, the ultimate uh, resolution would be to reboot your computer so that all of the uh, install uh, ramifications are added into your, into your browser and whatnot, and then get back into Canvas, and it should work properly, right? So if, if all else fails, you know, just restart your system, get back in your browser, and then allow uh, Proctoria to uh, control your test. You just go in and click on the test link and take your test. All right. Now, um, so that's the Proctoria. Uh, Proctoria. Uh, now, most times when I, I tell students to use uh, the Canvas, uh, my... Uh, my uh, assignments, I put them in modules. So if you click on modules, you'll see everything that's uh, published. Because every, everything, if you're looking on my screen, with a green line is actually published for you to do. Anything else won't show, All right? But your screen will be a little different. But if you're looking at mine, everything that has a green line, you, you are able to see because it's published. Now, it may have a date, it may not. If you notice, none of these have dates on it, okay? So none of these have dates. 
But if you look here, uh, we also, uh, uh, it says, uh, what I'll do, I'll, let's say for this class period I'll, and, and all the others, after we have our, our, our class, I'll post my information to, uh, to YouTube and then I'll put it in this link in a stream. So you'll be able to go back and look at uh, the lecture for today or for that day or any other day. Uh, B uh, BRCC gave us some hot spots uh, around Baton Rouge. I know uh, one guy said he, he's uh, UL. So, uh, but these these are hot spots if you don't have uh, internet, but you could request for a uh, a hot spot if they have some available. You know, you can you can have pick one up. But there are areas around Baton Rouge that have free internet that you like. Some places you can sit in and go in or go around and get the internet. <clears throat> uh, we will have a departmental informational. And that's September 15th. You'll be able to log into it. And uh, uh, the informational is uh, it's like a, a, a group meeting for all the computer science students get to meet the faculty, get to ask questions, get to know about our, our degree programs we have, and any other thing that we have, activities and whatnot we have on campus. If you can't make that one, you could probably make the one at night on, a, on the next day at six o'clock. So depending on what your time schedule is, you know, I would I would say try to take advantage of that. All right, and then I have this in there twice, but don't worry about this. Um, so don't worry about that yet. The contract, the contract is it's our student contract where you go look at the syllabus and say, okay, I agree to do, I'll follow, you know, the syllabus. And then here is, if you're using a Mac, using a Mac computer, Mac normally allows you to use Xcode to uh, compile C++ program, rather than you trying to download uh, the Visual Studio. And Visual Studio takes up a lot of memory. And I won't say a whole lot, but it does take up some memory. So, you know, you're gonna have to have some space available. Uh, then this link, uh, creating slash compiling a program, it give you the steps to create and compile a program. Now, I'm gonna go back to this link here, not this link, here. Now I'm gonna go out. Now remember when you did the uh, signing of the role, student utilities, if you notice down here, this is a link so that you can uh, download Visual Studio 2017. So you click here and it will download Visual Studio for you so you can have it. So you don't have to try to search for it on the, on the website, whatever. Click on this link and you can download the studio, Visual Studio 2017. Now, the latest version is 2019, I, I think. I know last semester it was. It operates a little different. I have the videos for 2017 that you can look at and watch, you know, to uh, maneuver in creating your assignments, all right? Because if I go back here, if you look, um, let me go back home. If you look, if you go down here, you got register to sign the roll, but look, how-to videos, and then there's just a YouTube uh, link, register for, in the class, for the class. So this tells you how to register for the class so that you can sign the role. And then signing up the role, creating a data file, which is stuff we're gonna do, uh, creating a, vi a Visual Studio file. So uh, all of that is in there. So that, and this one with online GDB, and this will be somewhat of a backup if uh, your Visual Studio crashes when you're working on something, you just have to do it. So. These are links that are there for you so that it can uh, help you to uh, do the work that you have to do. All right. <clears throat> Class, and then uh, I have bonuses. I'm going to go over in the syllabus. Bonuses are 5% of your grade. Participation, 5%. Quizzes, 10%. Assignments are uh, 35%. And class... This is a 12-week class. I normally give a lot of programs. I normally give uh, two programs at a time, and sometimes three. I don't know how we'll do it this semester, this uh, 15, this 12-week uh, session, because I don't want to give you a whole lot of work 
and you're frustrated and don't learn anything because you're trying to learn everything. Uh, I'm going to see. It's, it's going to be tough because I'm dealing with my, 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 my 15-week class right now. So the same thing, being that it's online, you're going to have to do a lot of reading. You're going to have to put in a lot of work, you know, because and it all depends on how much you retain because in computer science uh, and in my class, we might do a program. If you, if you understand it, if you get it, the next program will be that much easier. But if you either try to copy or get somebody to do it for you or whatever, and then you get to the next program, it's like, man, where am I? Where am I? What am I doing? What's going on? It's just going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. So I just say you you got to retain this information. You have to, you know. And then we're gonna have these tests, you know, that we uh uh you know gonna have, and then uh, our final, which I didn't put out yet. All right. So let's look at our syllabus. And if you look on the right hand side, you'll see. And I'm I'm not sure if you all have this. You have the Zoom where you go to the different Zoom uh, the, the Zoom sessions. See here. And I just created that this morning. You know, I thought I had it done, but I just created it this morning. And so we have our recurring sessions. Now, when we have our holiday, obviously for Thanksgiving, you know, we won't have class unless, depending if it's something, you say, well, Mr. Lester, many of us want to do such and such or whatever. Then I might, you know, then that we'll do something. You know, other than that, you know, you know that that's a holiday and that, that's a day off. All right, um, so like I say, this is the uh, one for today. Now, um, you have, uh, I, have, I have grades, uh, the syllabus. You always can get to the syllabus, click on the syllabus and it gives it to you and we're gonna click on it. The people, I make that available. Like you can reach out to different people in the classroom if you need to or want to or whatever. You know, you'll be able to see them and I think click on it to get to email them or whatever, uh, however. Uh, course evaluation at the end of the semester. Uh, I think they'll make something available where you have to evaluate the course and me. All right. Uh, rubrics, don't worry about the rubrics. Uh, instructor course eval. Okay, that's the course evaluation, instructor evaluation. Uh, I don't think assignments you have to worry about that. But like I say, most times you're going to be clicking on uh, modules your grades, the syllabus, and the Zoom. Announcements, normally I'll put out announcements, but what, when I put out announcements, I'll, I'll also put out um, normally an email. Now in here, what I did was, if you notice, you'll see certain head, uh, titles like, uh, where is it? Um, head of files. I hit a file for your assignment. When I, with all your assignments, except for the one, the first or se first two or whatever that I thought I'd give you, I'm gonna want you to create a header file and have that header file submitted when you submit your assignment. But I'll tell you and show you how to do that. But I want you to do it. And I, it will be a part of your grade and then I will take off. Uh, another thing, well, look here, sample code. So see what happens is sometimes students say, well, Mr. Vessel, we went over this exercise. Could you copy that code and paste it for us so we can refer to it? So what I would do is I would just copy the code. Now it's not tabbed over or whatnot, but if you copy it and put it in, then you can look at it. But it's just code that we went over in class during that time. You know, it's it's not the program or the assignment, but it have the features of what the assignment is to do. So you you'll be able to look at it and see some things other than what's in the book, all right? Uh, also in announcements uh, at BRCC, uh, where is it, uh, the, uh, the uh, here, you get a free version of the 365, off, uh, 365 uh, Office 365, but you have to have your uh, email address, all right? And you need to know your email address and, and, and your password. So make sure you know that, because once you click here, uh, normally you, this link here, you click on this link and you get all these and plus more uh, applications, all right? So when you click here, it'll take you to a screen, ask you with your student or teacher. So it's gonna ask you for your email address. You put your email address and then it's gonna, I think it asks you if, school, uh, if you're a teacher, 
or a student, and then it'll continue on and then allow you to download all of the uh, applications that they have available, okay? So that you can do all of the work that you have to do. Because some work that in my class, you're gonna have to uh, do documentate. Well, all my programs, I got documentations that you, that you have to turn in. Give an example. Uh, let's go to modules. Now, am I going too fast or whatever? Uh, like I say, in my class, you always can break in and ask questions, all right? I'm not a stickler on, all. Oh, you just got to listen, whatever. You always can, uh, oh, Mr. Sylvester, can you go back over this? Oh, Mr. Sylvester, how do you, whatever? I'm, I don't have an issue with that. You know, you can just break in at any time. Um, but, uh, yeah, what I wanted to show you was in our assignments, notice here, these are two bonus assignments that you have to do today. These two assignments, uh, these bonus assignments, all right, these are programs that uh, pretty much, uh, let's see, I don't know the audio written. I don't think they're written. All right, let's see here. Open. All right. Okay, no, it's not written. But we need to go over our uh, our chapter. But this one dealing with... Uh, with uh, arrays. So we're gonna be starting with arrays. So, uh, but let me get to the others to, so you understand what I'm talking about. Let me go back to modules. All right, but that's two bonus programs. In modules, well not bonus, assignment, but in uh, my programs here, notice you got program assignment one, then program one document. All right, what happens is I want you to do the program, but I will also want you to have a, a, a document uh, 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 of your program, all right? This document is gonna consist of a cover page, all right? That's gonna have the program name, the course name, the instructor's name, your name, the due date. What format you do that on the cover page, it doesn't matter to me as long as you have that information. The statement of the problem, which is the detailed description of the assignment class. Normally that just the exact same copy of the assignment or the problem that I gave you that goes into the documentation. Some students try to rewrite it or write some portion of it. No, just give me everything that, that I gave you as the assignment back to me as the statement of the problem. Uh, the uh, name and content of your source file. So, and that's each one of those listings is a new page. So you're gonna have at the middle, the top of the page, it might be uh, program1.cpp. And then you'll list the source code. And all this will be put in a Word document. So you'll be copying and pasting your, your, uh, your information into a Word document. All right, then um, after your source code, the next, on a new page, if your source code go three and a half pages, on that next page, I want you to take a screenshot of your program's output, all right? Whatever output came uh, from your, uh, the, uh, your running your program, take a screenshot and insert that screenshot into the document. Then on a new page, I want you to uh, list, copy and paste your header file, which I told you, the header file that you're going to have associated with your program. Then if applicable, because what? All programs may not have an input file. All programs might not have an output file, depending on where we are in the, in the course and what, 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 what the assignment is given. If there's an input file, you're going to copy that content and paste the name and paste it in the, uh, in the document and give me the name. You're going to uh, copy if there's an output of, uh, output file that you have to write to, the name of that file and the content. And then the last part is your data dictionary. A data dictionary uh, would be a list of all user-defined uh, variables or fields, uh, whether it's functions, whether it's uh, data files, whether it's, whether it's structures, classes, and variables, you know, whether they're arrays, vectors, or whatever. And what I want you what I want you to do in that data file is group each function. So if I have one function that's the main, I want all of the variables that you created or used in that main function. It can be count, 
All right, you're gonna have like the data type of count could be int, the, the variable name count, and then count is used in my for loop to, to uh, control the loop of reading in whatever, you know, let me know what that's for. Then you might have a variable called a name, it could be string, the data type, and then name, and then what name is used for name the name field is an array if it's an array it could not it may not be a name is an array field that holds the names of the uh the people uh, of student being read in so stuff like that so that's what i want and like i said we'll we'll go over that more but all of these programs will have documentation that you have to submit with it all right um and uh so let's go over the syllabus all right so this is pretty much the class you know but outside of programming but let's go over our syllabus uh let's go click on syllabus and i'm clicking i want to download it but you can get to the syllabus here and you can download it or either from the syl site you can go at the top i have it in pdf and doc form and you can click here and look using visual studio 17 still up here all right so that's no problem uh many of you if you're in, uh, interested in uh the degrees click on here as degree brcc and give you the checklist you can download it fill it out look at it you know but we ask that you always be advised if you had lsu or you want to transfer to lsu once you get your degree these are the requirements so each one of those uh, degrees we offered are listed for Southeastern, for Southern, for UL, you know, if you come here, these are the two different uh, degrees we offer. And what happens, you will get the AS and, and go to that school as a junior. All right. Um, here's the uh, online GDB link, you know, but like I say, that's only for emergency purposes. All right. Uh, here is... Uh, the notes that we're going to deal with now what i'll also do uh and i'll do that after class i have a pdf version of uh a older edition of the book and i can i can send you that all right but you can buy the book you know and then uh i have notes so you'll have those two references where you can you know uh uh be able to look for for you when you're doing the test and doing uh what to take to study for the test and to do your assignment all right so uh the syllabus so we click on the syllabus uh i want to click i'll click it all right i'll click here so when i click on the syllabus it tells us this course is cs well software design and programming 2 csci 1943 used to be 194 all right, three hour credit course, and it offers uh, intensive uh, capstone of material covered in CSC 193. All right, and it provides a, doc a disciplined approach to problem solving, program design, algorithm, and logic uh, development using high level language. All right, so all this stuff, so I'm going to try to introduce you to using thought searches, data structures, et cetera. All right, and like I say, it's it's a it's a step above what we've been doing, and you're gonna have to be able to retain all what you already learned to add on to what we're gonna learn. All right, so uh, the prerequisite for this class was uh, CSCI one nine three three, uh, no prerequisites. Uh, <clears throat> so the learning outcomes. Hopefully, you learn how to uh, use the uh, C plus plus constructs and write advanced C++ programs, identify advanced data structures, and even construct C++ programs to manipulate data, which you will do in a real world. All right, so uh, this course supports the development and uh, of competence of the following area. Oh, well, that's, in, that's a different thing. General studies is uh, a classification for other classes, uh, not ours. All right, so you will have a test, final exam. You'll have homework assignments. Uh, you will have a C++ program that you will have to uh, uh, execute. 
you have to write them, you have to execute them, you have to uh, either uh, have data files, etc. So you're gonna have to be doing a lot, okay? And I'll, I'll work with you on them, but like I said, you're gonna have to do a lot of work, okay? And uh, it says uh, conform to exter uh, external interf interface requirements uh, for, for the assignment, okay? Which includes starting the program, how data is in the program, and how the result, how, how results are output, okay? Conform to error handling requirements, right? Based on uh, if I give you a program and I say uh, I want data that only consists of whatever bit, but write that code to do whatever. So now, uh, here's my information. My name is David L. Sylvester Sr. Uh, I'm a professor at BRCC. Office number the office doesn't matter right now. My email address is sylvesterd at mybrcc.edu. Uh, this is the office phone. Uh, you call the office phone. I don't know if they still have them connected, but it should uh, send a message to me if you leave one over there to my phone. All right. So, but uh, you know that we're online now and there's no, really no communication through uh, being at office. But it says, although uh, issues may be uh, solved by communication, communicating through email, there may be times when Zoom sessions is needed. And listed below, okay, are links and passwords for Zoom sessions, okay? It may be a good idea to confirm a Zoom meeting first, okay? Don't have to, but what happens is I did my office hours based on Zoom links. So what I did for Mondays, if any Monday, what you would do, you would click on this link, I can say from nine to one, I should be there. Uh, Grant you, it could be something come up or whatever, but for the most part, I'll be listening, waiting for somebody to come in on that Zoom link, all right? And no, 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 I'm not get a notification, and then I'll say, okay, hello, how you doing? And then you can uh, communicate. Now, this Zoom link is different from the Zoom link of Canvas for the course, all right? This is for the office hours. On Tuesday, this is the Zoom link. On Tuesday, it might be kind of hard to get me except for 9 to 10 because I have a class from 10 to uh, uh, ten to 11, 15, all right? So what happens is um, after my classes most, most often, you know, I, I answer questions and do whatever. So it's like my class, even though it ends, it might end 30 minutes, sometimes a whole hour later than the class. And even my last class is from 12 to 1.15, and then I have 30 minutes. But I normally be answering questions with the, those students too. So it's kind of hard on my day to contact me except for that 9 to 10 hour. And then on uh, the Wednesdays from 9 to 12, and then from 1 to 2.15. And see, after this class from 12 to 1, I may be talking to the class. But from 9 to 12, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. So, like I said, these are the links for the office hours, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, okay? Uh, this is the course, uh, CRN 11951, and this is the course section, it's section two, all right? And our lectures are at 10 o'clock on Thursdays from 10 to 11.15, and it's a 12-week course, all right? And it said, you must register with the www.syonline.com website to sign the role. The role must be signed, and this, I'm gonna change this. This should say uh, Thursdays from 10 o'clock to 12. 10 o'clock in the morning till 12, uh, 58 uh, p.m., all right? So, um, you are to watch our recorded lectures and view chapter content before class time, but that was, you don't have to worry about this, but you should be reviewing before we have class, all right? During class, you have an opportunity to ask questions about the chapter and or assignments. I always give us students opportunity to ask questions. No, you know, I, I, I always allow that. This is the name of the book, all right? Starting out with C++ from Control Structures to Objects, Ninth edition, uh, Tony Gaddis, and then this is the... Uh, the ISBN number. 
Uh, it says something about material USB. Well, we online now, so would you have your computer? So, but I would ask you that make sure you keep maybe a backup because sometimes working on programs, your system crash or or something happens and you don't have uh, you don't have the uh, you don't have the uh, the files. Then you got to start over, and sometimes that can be overwhelming. Uh, hopefully, you have a uh, uh, regular access to a computer and also uh, internet. And hopefully it's Windows, but if you have the Mac, like I say, you'd have to use uh, Xcode. Uh, webcam or cell phone. Now you can access the, uh, the Zoom link through a cell phone. And if anybody uh, need that, then I may have to start uh, sending out the all of the specifications for the Zoom session. I'm not sure what they send you when they send it to you. Do they send just a link or do they send all of the phone numbers and everything so you can log in through a phone? Uh, but you should be able to do it through a phone also. Um, <clears throat> you need to install, have your C++ compiler installed. Now this says responders, but this should be uh, the uh, proctorial, not responders. I think my, uh, my uh, cache memory, because I changed it, but it, just, it didn't change the cache. But it should be responders locked down browser, all right. And make sure that you can that your uh, your BRCC email works and your Canvas login works because many teachers have all the information in Canvas, and if you can't get into Canvas, you can't see the work or, or see when something's due. And then uh, your email, if your email is not working, then you can't get in your email to. Uh, to uh, look at to, to see what uh, uh, messages are being sent to you. So if you have those issues, contact the IT department. They should be able to get to you and do it, what's need to be done in a timely fashion so that you can get your work done. And so here I have it here, Proctorio. This is the link again. You click on it and you can download it, install the uh, extension into your browser, and then, and then you're able to take the test. This is a download for Visual Studio again. Uh, Solo Learn is just uh, an online, uh, kind of like a tutorial for C++. You can go through it, it's like a refresher, and then have different segments of it. And what I did uh, with my earlier classes, I, I assigned them uh, the different chapters so that they can go through it and kind of understand a little bit more about the C++. So you, if you got any issues, you may want to go through the solo, solo line and kind of refresh it and get a refresher course of uh, the C++, you know, the earlier part. These are the links, uh, the BRCC homepage, Canvas. Now, these links are important if, like, say, the BRCC website go down. A lot of people get to Canvas through mybrcc.edu. But if this uh, link is down, you can always type this or click on this and it'll take you straight to the the uh the uh instructor.com uh domain bypassing brcc because that's why that information is housed same thing with uh lctc uh well lola lola is located on the lctcs uh server but most students get through it through brcc so if brcc website is down you still could get to it in mine also. I don't have it in BRCC, but this is my leg. All right. Any questions so far? Questions? I know I've been talking and talking. Any questions? Um, no questions? So this is uh, the part of the syllabus that deal with somewhat of the class, but also of the campus. Disability statement. Now, I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'll tell you what it somewhat means all right disability statement if you have any type of disability you need to as soon as possible contact uh the office of disability services and put it uh, give them the proper paperwork so that teachers can accommodate you in a, in the proper fashion you don't want to wait till after you take a test or after you uh, missed an assignment and say, oh, well, I have this disability. I should get more time or I should 
uh, uh, have my test read to me or I should know. Get it done ahead of time. See how the teacher uh, uh, manipulates the class and then you're able to say, look, hey, I won't be able to manage this way, but I do have accommodations that can be uh, offered to me so that I can try to get the best grade I can. So make sure you do that if you have a disability. All right. Uh, the student conduct in class policy. This, I won't read this, but in short, what this saying is we all are adults. We all should be able to respect one another. And uh, at the end of the day, if I, it's something that I don't like within this class, I don't like the way the teacher teaches, I don't like the, the way they talk, I don't like the students, they being rude or whatever, whatever it may be, then you may need to uh, find another class, you know, just actually just get you another class, no problem. But hopefully everybody in the class is able to be adult enough to respect one another. So that's basically what it's saying. All right. But grading scale uh, on the grading, uh, it's a 10 uh, point grading scale. And again, this is my weight. Okay. 30% uh, uh, for the test, 10% quizzes, 20% final, 35% for projects, assignments, and reports, 5% uh, participation, and 5% bonus. Now you say, okay, what's this? This adds up to 105%. So you're getting 5% bonus off the top, okay? So if you do all the bonus work, that's going to be five points added to, you know, your overall 100%, uh, your grade out of 100%, all right? Plus, you may have bonuses inside of an assignment or whatever, okay? Um, so, you, and this is the thing. You can't say, well, Mrs. Sylvester, I made all hundreds on my test and all hundreds on my, uh, on my, uh, on my, uh, on my, uh, my test and all hundreds on my uh, final, but that's just what, 20 and 30, which is what, 50% of your grade. So if you didn't do any projects, that's a minus 35%. So looking at that, you got, if you did all hundreds on the exam and on, on, on the final exams, that's 50%, that's zero. And if you did the bonuses, that's 10. So 50 and 10 is 60. So you did all your quizzes, got 100%, that's 70. So the best grade you can make is a C. You understand? Because you what? Didn't do any of the uh, assignments. So you didn't get any of the percentage points from that. So that's how you look at that. So well, even so, so don't say, oh, I did well on all my tests, but then you don't do anything on the projects. Or you do all the projects, but don't you don't take the final exam. Don't take the final exam. That's 20% going from your grade automatically. So if you got a, 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 a 90 going into the final and you don't take the final, that's 20% taken away. So that, that uh, 90 can turn into a, will turn into a 70, which would be a C. All right, so you just gotta, you gotta watch it. Now, attendance policy. The, the uh, college rule is you, know, you must always attend class. Uh, I, I know you need to attend every class because when we're going over stuff, we're going we're gonna to go over stuff and we're going to leave that and go to something else. And you'll be like, well, I'm not quite sure because you're going to miss class. So it is important that you come to class. But I do know that we live in the real world. Sometimes it may be uh, times where you can't come to class. But uh, like I say, I'll have the Zoom sessions. You can watch the Zoom session. All right. Uh, makeup uh, quizzes. Um, for quizzes, like I say, we try to work with you. Even though we have it in the syllabus, you know, it's to protect us because, like I say, students a lot of times try to abuse a policy. So what I normally do, hey, if you have an excuse, well, Mr. Vesta, I couldn't make, okay, well, what I'll do, I'll open up the quiz from this time and this time, let you let you make it up. All right, sometimes. But if you constantly, oh, Mr. West, I, I couldn't make, oh, Mr. West, I couldn't do, oh, then it's like a pattern. Then I might say, no, you know, you had enough chances and it look, look, look like every time, you know, you, you're trying to do the same exact thing. So, you know, I frown upon that. But, you know, you got, 
then you just you know miss okay uh, you missed it okay i'll give may give you an opportunity to take take the uh, quit all right i'll make up the quit but i give you a, a almost a whole week window to take the quit and whatnot general policies uh probably log in the zoom you know on the classes but i don't have issues with you logging in late log in whenever you can so that you can get whatever you can out the class all right it's best to get the information than to say oh well 30 minutes late from the class i ain't gonna log in i'll just wait no log in you may have questions you know based upon the lecture all right unless you're asking a question or whatever uh say you should be muted now if you know your environment is quiet you don't have to be muted all right you can keep your mic open but just be considerate about it if you know you have a dog and your dog might might act out at times then you may want to keep your mic you know, muted or, or whatnot. All right. All questions during the uh, class should be directed toward the to, toward the instructor. You know, but we can have discussions. You know, that's no problem. Uh, take tests on Canvas, and that's not respondents. That should be uh, proctorial. All right. I'll change that. Okay. And when mic is unmuted, all background noises, TV, radio, pets, etc., should be kept to a minimum. And we know, like I say, we can't control every situation, but try to control it as much as possible. All right. Uh, withdrawal dates. Now, these are the dates. Uh, uh, the last date of withdrawal from a class with a W. All right. The 15-week date. All right. The 12-week date. And then the first seven-week dates. And date and the uh, second seven-week date. All right. So you gotta you gotta be aware of those dates. All right. Uh, cheating and plagiarism. You can read through this. This is the policy. You know there's a violation. If you do it, you can get suspended from school, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All this all is simply saying for me, my part is the catch of cheating is a zero. Now, not just you, you and the other person. Simple as that. You know, it's just a zero. All right. If you push it, then we can take it to the administration and I'll let them handle it. But cheating is a zero, right? What is cheating? Cheating is copying your your work, or, I mean, somebody else's work and taking it as yours. All right? Okay. Um, safety concerns. We really don't have many safety concerns, being that we're not on campus at this time, but we do have concerns based on uh, corona. So there's, there are all protocols set in place for uh, you if uh, you go on campus to do anything. You know, make sure you wear a mask, make sure you follow other proper protocol, the, uh, the distancing and whatnot. So you can read through this, even if you get the virus. If you get the virus, you have to report, report it to me and to the school. Then you have to do the proper uh, quarantine. If you self quarantine, and once you uh, complete all that, then you can contact us, let us know, whatever. So there is a, a, a procedure in place, all right, for that. Um, library learning resources, uh, you know the library is pretty much closed, but you may still be able to uh, get information through these links from the library. We have an academic learning center. The academic learning center uh, have tutoring, study groups, uh, study tips, and Canvas help. Now, you know most of that probably be virtual. And I would tell you, if you are uh, a person who's taken the 192 and maybe 193, you may want to contact them to see if you uh, want to be a tutor, a tutor, you know, because uh, they do uh, offer a uh, tutoring and they do pay tutors to uh, to the students. And like I say, grant you, it might be online, but like I say, it will be some money coming in for you. All right. Um, <clears throat> BRCC Cares. BRCC Cares is a um, is an online reporting system to report any and everything that you wish to report. Uh, it's for students, faculty, staff, administration, administrators, and even visit visitors. All right. If you felt that it could be a vendor that offended you, it could be a teacher that may have uh, uh, may not want to communicate with you about a grade. Uh, or just don't want to communicate with you. It could be a student uh, harassing a teacher or whatever. Anybody can file uh, a report with uh, through Barricades 
about that issue and then that issue will be taken up with through the proper channel. So this is in place for any and everybody who uh, have any type of issues uh, that come up, you know, and they try to want to get it resolved. They cannot get it resolved any other way. All right. So just keep in mind that, that, that that's there for you, me, and any, any other uh, worker or whomever that, that either goes on the canvas or affiliated with BRCC, all right? Now, if you are in computer science, all right, we at, in the computer science department want, want you to make sure that you check your, uh, uh, your, um, your course of study because many students say, oh, I'm in computer science, but when, when uh, we, we go pull up their record, it might say general studies or it might say another major. Now, the reason uh, why we want you to do that is when we uh, pull our records so that we can either reach out to students or we pulling them for uh, grant purposes or we either pulling them out uh, so that we can uh, uh, properly advise or assess you, your name won't be in the pool or uh, won't be in the listing. So make sure that your uh, your, your uh, course of study is proper, proper, properly uh, assigned. So you, you need to go into your LOLA and, 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 and apply for your proper course of study, all right? And this is uh, just a, a, a course outline, okay? So now, Anybody with any questions so far? That's just uh, the course and how we're going to go about it. Anybody with any questions? Questions? All right. Now, um, this would be the first chapter, all right? First chapter, chapter seven, dealing with arrays, all right? Now, arrays hold arrays hold multiple values, all right? Now, an array allows you to store and work with multiple values of the same data type, all right? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up uh, Visual Studio, all right? I'll open up Visual Studio and I'll show you how I, I want you to open up your projects, even though I think I have it set up in online like I showed you, all right? When you get here, when you install it, first of all, you want to, you want to use desktop wizard, okay? So what happens is, uh, no, I'm not thinking it would go, no, I don't have it there. But you choose the desktop wizard, all right? And, and you have to make sure this is C++. Choose desktop wizard. Choose again, desktop wizard. Have to make sure it's a wizard, desktop and the wizard. And you give it a name. I'll say first class. All right. It's telling you where, it's, where well, the folder that's going to save it in and the solution name. All right. So I'll click OK. Now it pops up to this screen and you want to choose empty project. Leave everything else alone, but you want an empty project. Click OK. And now it's going to give you a screen. All right. Uh, blank screen. Give it time. You have a blank screen. Okay. So now you have this blank screen. I need to move this over. Then you write. If, if this screen is not in this form, you just go to window and you go to reset window layout. And I say yes. And then it just puts it in this form. So now you right click on source. Then you would click add or uh, arrow over to add, then you arrow over to new item. And then you would choose C++ or, or CPP file. Click add, and now you have a blank file with nothing associated with it. This is what I normally tell my students. When you in C++, normally you would want to create the shell. All right. And all I'm doing here is creating a basic shell. Now, basic shell, loaded a header file, loaded my standard library, 
created my main function, which all CPP file or C++ files will have. All right? So now all I'm concerned about is my coding. Because what? If I'm doing string, I have to load my header file here. If I'm doing vectors, I have to load my vector header file here. But I have my basic structure of my C++ program that I can run and it's going to execute. All right. So I can put in here, I'll just say, I'll put in here a uh, C out. And I'll do this uh, slash. I'll just uh, arrow down the tab over. And, all right, so we just output, and this is a test, dot, dot, dot. So I debug it, okay, I mean compile the bill and compile it, and here's gonna tell me all the errors that I have, okay? I have no errors, okay? So now I can debug and go to start without debugging, all right? And I'll get a dark screen, which is a black screen that's gonna come up, and it's going to give me my results. New line, new line, and this is a test. Okay, so uh, this is a sample program. Well, like I said, it's a small program, but got in it, put a put program in, compiled it, it ran. All right, notice what the uh, CPP file name is, source.cpp. If you wanted to download that file, you could do file, and then you can do save where's where cpp at uh what is that wait 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 where is that i normally could do file yeah save source cpp as and when you click here now you can put it on your your uh, hard drive somewhere else even though it's somewhere on your computer now somewhere else and then upload it to me or whatever now oh uh, an array an array uh holds multiple values. We've been working, uh, you have been working with, with uh, variables such as, uh, say, int number. Number can only hold one value at a time, right? So if I do uh, int number, and then I can do uh, uh, cn, uh, well, well, I won't do cn, I'll just say number equals 10, or, uh, or say 200. So now I could say C out, uh, and I'll put some space. I'll say C out number, all right? So number can only hold what? One value at a time. If I change number, uh, if I say uh, uh, number equals 100, and then C out, Then what? The first time number is assigned what? To uh, 200. It's going to output 200. Then number equal 100. It's going to assign 100 to number and now it's going to output 100. So what I'll do here, I'll also put a backslash. Oh, it got it, it got it. So when I run it, let's, let's run, debug it um, and see what we get. So notice what happened. Number was only equal to one value at a time. First it was equal to 200, but then it was equal to 100. But with arrays, now you can have a, a variable equal to multiple values, but they all must be of the same data type. How do I declare an array, okay? First of all, I need to either give it a size or initialize it, all right? If I give it a size, I could say uh, 10. So now, what have I just done? I've just told it that number can have 10 int values associated with it, all right? Now, what I can do, I can say uh, for, uh, let's say, I want to get the same value. I'll say 10, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So now, all of a sudden, now number is an array 
that holds how many values? 10 different values, all right? So now what I can do using a loop, I can say for int x equals zero, x less than 10, x plus plus. Now, so I have this loop here and I wanna output each value of number. But being that number is an array now, I cannot just reference number by just number. I have to use a subscript to reference it. So number, uh, I could do C out. And well, I'll do a C out up here first. Make it drop down. All right, so that's just gonna make it drop down before it starts printing out. So I'll C out number sub x so if i say number sub x this is an array all right array have these 10 elements but you have to remember with arrays with arrays you always start your subscript at zero and i know we as we as humans we always start counting as one but on the computer it normally always starts at zero so if I'm looking at this list, number sub zero is equal to what? Is equal to four. Number sub one is equal to three, all right? Number sub two is equal to 10. So you understand what's happening? So this is sub zero, sub one, sub two, sub three, sub four, sub five, sub six, sub seven, sub eight, sub nine. Now you say, well, Mr. Levesta, you said it was 10, but zero through nine is what? 10. So you got to understand that. So let's run this program and see what our output would be. Notice we have one variable. All right, we're printing out the subscript of that variable, num, and it has 10 elements. So when we debug it, look what happens, all right? So well, let me let me do this a little bit better than this. Uh, I'll do this. All right, all right. I'll tab over and let's debug it. Uh, what happened? What happened? Okay, let me close it up. Okay. Oh, this should be a slide, backslide. Oh, no, that's right. Uh, Diva, uh, Diva. All right, so here we go. So now, so if we look at this, 4, 3, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 90. So that array allowed us to what? Allowed, allowed us to store what? 10 values in it. Now, what, what size can an array be? An array can be of any size. I could make it 100, 1,000, or whatever, all right? So let's uh, look back at our notes, all right? And I know, let's see, let me see. All right, everybody's still there. Uh, let's go back to uh, our notes. So given that, let's look at what this says, okay? An array works like a variable that can store a group of values all of the same type which we saw a val the values are stored together in consecutive memory location that's key because maybe not now but when we get to pointers it's going to be very very important and remember that consecutive memory locations what does that mean when i start from an address every address be after that going to be a part of my array until I finish it, you know, allocate it, okay? So, you have previously worked with, and I gave you that example like with X, int days equals six. Days can only equal to one assigned value at a time, period. That's it, one at a time, all right? But when we do this, int days, and we use these square brackets, semicolon, now, days can hold what? Six different values, right? Of what data type? Int. Okay, you gotta remember that. All of the data types of the array 
have to be of the same data type. So if I put float here, then what? If we have six days with, with uh, well, days of six float variables, values. So this is it. So don't, don't not initialize because what? In ours, we, we, we made days sub zero equal to a value, so one, so whatever, so whatever. But when you do it like this, you allocate the, the locations, but then what? There's nothing in them. So, so they still allocated, so it's like it's zero. So don't, don't, don't not initialize. And you got to understand, in my 193 class, my students was not understanding that class. This is initialize, initialization. I'm introducing X to my, my program. I mean, number to my program. Int numbers, okay? Int saying, okay, data type numbers. I'm allocating the space, but I'm also giving the values at the time I'm introducing it. If I try to do something like this, int, uh, if I could say, int x, and then x equals five, this is that declaring x, not initializing, because we don't know what x value is when we, we introduced it. But when we did this, x equals five, we assigning x, all right? We're not initializing. But if I wanted to say, if I told you, take, take these two statements and make it an initialization of a X, all you would do is this. Now, int X equal five is initializing X. I'm giving it the data type and I'm giving it a value at the same time. Allocating the space in memory and giving it a value of start, at the starting point. Okay, so that's the difference between initializing and assigning, okay, a value, a value. Okay, so now, um, back to the program. So it says the numbers inside the brackets is the size declarator. So in day six, the size declarator is six, which means days can hold what? Six elements, six different uh, values, right? So, um, int count, count can hold only one value. Float price, price can hold only one value. Short letter, letter can hold only one value. But when we have int day six, it allocates enough memory uh, so that you can have six different elements in, I mean, values stored in days, all right? And each one of those days will be represented by a subscript, all right? You have a value and you can reference that data by using a subscript, all right? So, looking at this, an array, an array size declarator can either be a literal or fixed value. Now, what that means is, okay, look, this is a fixed value, days equals six, all right? So now, Days is equal to six. Six is six. Six is six is a constant value. But look what happens here. We can say okay. We can set days to equal to num days. But what we do, we make num days is which is a, a literal, but we make it a constant of six. So we can say int days equal num days, where num days is equal to six, and six cannot be changed. I mean num days cannot be changed because we use this one this command come all right so that means what it can be changed all right now let's look at this arrays of data type uh, of any data type can be defined so you can define array of string of a char of uh of uh int short long double whatever it doesn't matter okay the following are all valid uh array definitions float Temperature 100. That means what? I have an array of 100 float values that can be stored in the temperature. Char name 41. So that means that name variable uh, uh, array can have 41 characters, really 40 characters. The, the, the last one, and we'll get to that, going to be the alternative. Um, long int, I mean long unit 50. So units can have 50 uh, 
val uh, val uh, values of long int. Then we have double sizes. So that means what? Sizes can have uh, 1,200 values of double, all right? So that's how you deal with arrays. Now, uh, the arrays and uh, what I want to say, the arrays and how they work in memory, memory requirements of array. The amount of memory used uh, by an array depends on the array's data type and the number of elements, right? So we're going to see, and this is not very important to you now, but when you start working within an environment where you develop in software and you have to use arrays, and uh, memory is a uh, memory is a uh, how would I say is limited, and and you want to create a program that's efficient, then this will become very important for you to know. All right, but for now, just to write your code, it might not be, but later on it will. All right, so. Here we got uh, the hours array defines, defined here is an array of six shorts. Short in, you know, because short is in, uh, hours six. So short allocates two bytes for every, every uh, variable, I mean every value. So on a typical PC, a short uses two bytes of memory. So the hour array would occupy 12 bytes. What that would be short is two, two times six is 12. So that means what? Somewhere in my memory, when I allocate shorts uh, or hours of shorts, I have to have available 12 bytes of memory, consecutive memory available. Otherwise, I run into problem. All right. Uh, and looking at this, it says that what? Uh, char letter 25. Char is one byte. So what? One times 25 gives you 25. Uh, short, we said, was two, two bytes. It allocates each one of, as two, two bytes. So two times 100. Wait, short, ring 100. Yeah, that would be 200, right. So then you got int, which is four. Int, uh, miles 84. So four times 84 going to give you the 336. Then float, which is also four, uh, temp, float, temp, 12. So four times 12 going to give you 48. And then the double uh, allocates eight bytes for each element. So double distance 1,000, that would be eight times 1,000, which gives you 8,000. So in that instance, you're going to have to have 8,000 consecutive uh, 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 bytes of memory available in order to declare uh, and use distance to be 1,000. Okay, so that's that's the purpose for that, all right? Excuse me, Mr. Vesto. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, uh, what time are we supposed to leave? Right, you're supposed to leave at one fifteen. So what I'll do, class, because I'll go all day. What I'll do, class, I'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll stop here. I can't give you an assignment because I didn't go over enough, but you can start it if you want. If you feel you, you want to get started with your assignment, you can get started with it. But I won't uh, I'll hold you liable to turn it in. We'll meet next class period, and uh, 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 we'll go over the information that we need to go over because I think the, uh, the assignments, well, it, it, you might be able to go through the notes and it'll help you. But we'll I'll continue and go through it, and then we'll... Uh, and then I'll, I'll assign it, and then uh, uh, you may have be responsible for it, all right? But if you go through these notes, and like I say, you could go through your books, which where the notes come from, basically the same information, uh, it should help you. Don't worry about this information, because uh, but you can look at it, it might help you, you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't think this page connects, or it does, yeah. So what this does is how you look at, look, look at it or read from a data file. But you can look at those, the, that information and it might help you with uh, the program. But uh, we'll meet back up on Thursday, all right? But class, we not meet, the time we meet is not a lot of time. And man, it's, it's a lot of information. And, uh, and I like to go over the information rather than just say, hey, this is this, do this. This is this, do this. So 
Uh, next class period, we co we'll kind of finish up on this, and I'll give you, I'll assign those two assignments, and then we'll move on to the next chapter. We have a test, quiz and test, and then we'll, we'll continue on. All right? So, and I know some of y'all might have other classes or whatnot, too. So, uh, I'll see y'all next class period, but it's, it's going to be tough, man. Y'all gonna have to do a lot of read. I have to do a lot of read. All right. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, All, sir. Right. All right. All right. So uh, I'll see y'all next class period. I'll go ahead and try to fix the uh, the uh, the uh, login. And if I get it fixed, I'll, I might say uh, login is ready. Go ahead on and sign the roll. You know, and, and then just go ahead on and sign it. All right, so you go and get in the practice of signing. It, all right. Um. Yes. Okay. I'm oh, getting. A, what's that? I said I'm getting an error trying to um register. It's saying that I have to input a numeric value or something. But all right. On what what uh on the what class field? ID? All right. On the class ID. Now this is what happens with some people. Sometimes they'll hit the space bar, then type, or sometimes they'll type and hit the space bar. And what happened, a space is not a numeric character. So what I want you to do is go to the end, arrow to the right to the end of that, whatever you got in that field, and then backspace it all the way out and just type those four numbers because you might have a space, uh, you might have hit the space bar somewhere in it. Yeah, and anybody that need to do the, uh, do the, uh, you got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody need to do the registration? Let's, let's go back to that. Let's go back here. Uh oh, I could go here. I'll go back here. So first of all, you go to the uh, register and sign roll. All right. Then you'll click on register. When you click on register, put in your name, first name, last name, your major, the uh, section, which is two the semester, which is fall, the year, which is um, 2020, and your ID would just be four digits. That's it. That's it, just four digits. And then whatever password you want to put in, and then your email, and then click register. All right? And then, uh, then it should take you back. Uh, well, it should give you a screen where you have a login ID. It also should email you uh, your login ID and your password, but then that's when you should be able to go back into Student Utilities. I'll go back to the main screen. All right, wait, every day you come in for class here, Student Utilities, sign today's role, and then that's when you would put in your login, and this will go say I've already signed. Oh no, what did it do? Nothing. All right, if I click, see, you've already signed a role, contact instructor if and error. All right, so that's, that's what I get, but I need to fix it for you all. All right. So let me see who all them uh, got in. All right. Okay. So do I do have a uh, patent or oh, the patent? Uh, who else? Uh, yeah, okay. Williams. Okay. Uh, and Fraps. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, eleven. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? No, sir. I think that's about it. Okay. All right. And I'll work on this, and I'll try to get to where you can log in. All right. Anybody else? Any, any other question? No yes, question. Sir. All right. Sir, so I, I, 
All right, you too, man. And like I say, review my uh notes. And what I, I'm, I'm gonna send y'all that uh, uh that PDF also. All right. Uh, and then uh and then like I say uh uh, uh do try to work on that program, okay. So and then that way you'd have questions when we get back, you know, rather than not do it and then be stuck to try to turn it in. At least you have questions. All right. So I'll see y'all next class period, all right? And I'll do my shows, no shows. So whoever didn't come to class, they'll get an email saying that they'll be dropped. All right. So have a good one. You too. All right. Thank you.